These next videos are the mini vacation you need in life right now. And we can guarantee you ain't seen nothing like this before. In the coming moments of your life, your eye holes will be incredibly overstimulated and your mind grapes are likely to need juicing. You just have to see this to believe it. From freaky food combos to chicken pedicures, elevators of death to humongous hummers, 15 things you'll see for the first time in your life. Dead drops. Some folks think that if you find this in the wall, don't touch it. You might want to call the police. This bizarre outlaw project was conceived by conceptual artist Aram Barthold. It involves people hiding USB flash drives in cities around the world and embedding them into walls, fences, wherever. It's called a dead drop, and the name comes from the dead drop method of espionage communication, a USB mass storage device installed in a public square. The idea is that you look up their location, access the drive, and do what you see fit with the files, add your own, remove or copy them over, and you can do it yourself. So years after the project began, do these things still exist? Conveniently, there's an online database allowing people to find the USB locations and check on their status, updated by the last user is either working, broken, stolen, or gone. There are dead drops in Italy, Austria, California, and New York, and that's only the ones we know about. And there's a small but significant risk involved. Accessing random USB sticks on your computer isn't the smartest thing to do if you value the contents of your hard drive. However, everyone is invited to plug in. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Short-faced tumbler pigeon. This breed of fancy pigeon was developed over many years of selective breeding. The breed was created in Budapest and is renowned for having huge bubble eyes. Just look at those colossal peepers, the beak, while being short and thick, is straight set. The large eyes are pearl in color with thick, almost frog-like eyelids. It's not your average pigeon. The Budapest short-faced tumbler pigeon did indeed originate in Budapest in the first decade of the 20th century. The birds were bred by a family of pigeon racing enthusiasts who wanted a high-flying bird with incredible endurance. Maybe the tiny beak must save weight and the big eyes allow for seeing farther. Whatever the mechanism, the breeders succeeded. The original Budapest short-faced tumbler pigeons were able to stay in their air longer than other breeds and they flew at a greater height. Unfortunately, this also meant that more of them were lost both to nervous disposition and to the perils of the open sky. Today, these pigeons are more famous as charismatic pets than as racers. They reputably have a very affectionate and alert temperament with a trace of their trademark nervous disposition. <laughs> Invisibility Shield Company a few years ago, invisibility shields were all the rage in books and movies. Everybody wanted to build one and bridge the gap between science fiction and reality. As with trending ideas, people lost interest and some pivoted in military applications, leaving civilian technology enthusiasts in the lurch. But this London-based company has figured out the technology to do it. The company picked up the mantle and surged ahead with ideas they had and never gave up. Almost two years later, they've settled upon a reliable and efficient mechanism to make large yet light invisibility shields. The technology behind the function of the shield is fairly simple. A precision-engineered lens array works to deflect light from the subject, behind the shield, away from the observer, in front of the shield. The lenses are oriented vertically to allow light from the subject to diffuse when it passes through the shield. The light from the subject's background is retracted towards the observer who cannot spot the subject hiding behind the shield. The light works best against uniform backgrounds such as foliage, grass, sand, and sky, but will also work well against walls, painted lines, and rails. So imagine the possibilities. <laughs> Bicycle Knitted Socks a small sock factory in Japan created a machine that allows people to knit their own socks by pedaling on a stationary bicycle named Cherix. The machine has been very popular with tourists ever since it was inaugurated in 2017. Loose socks knitting machines were all the rage in Japan in the 1990s, but as the hype around loose socks died down, factories stopped making the machines and they became relics of a bygone era. However, the company, called Soiki Socks, managed to breathe new life into these machines by hooping them up to stationary bikes and allowing factory visitors to knit their own socks. Before they start pedaling, 
factory visitors choose the size of the socks as well as the colors of the threads they want to use. Specialized staff connects the threads to the machine, and when they're done, it's time to pedal. Unless you're a fan of knitting, making socks doesn't exactly sound like a fun experience. This was the reality that the brilliant minds behind this were confronted with when they set out to make sock making exciting for the masses. Luckily, they managed to come up with an ingenious contraption that combined a mechanical sock knitting machine and a bicycle. <laughs> Karen Diver If you're the type of person who gets a kick out of putting in a complaint, or even worse, asking to see the manager, then the chances are you'll love this new pop-up restaurant. Karen's Diner has just opened its doors in Sydney, Australia, where rude staff and poor service are promised in a bid to allow diners to vent their anger while getting the thrill of complaining. The restaurant, which is a take on the recent emergence of Karen memes, which prefer to middle-class entitled white women who love to complain, at Karen's, you'll be greeted and waited upon by rude waiters who in return are expecting you to give it full Karen, a place where you can complain and the staff literally doesn't care. The staff are rude, their manners are non-existent, and it's the perfect place for Karens everywhere to vent their anger and dismay at the world. Their motto? Come on, ask for the manager, we dare you. Even better, if your name is actually Karen, you can even bag some free drinks Thanks as long as you've brought your ideas proof. Those who are usually too polite or shy to unleash their full Karen potential are encouraged to fully immerse themselves into the theatrical experience where you don't have to worry about offending anyone because literally no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Hummer H1X3 A car lover with big ideas has built the world's biggest Hummer H1. With stairs, a toilet with a sink, and a guest space with a 360-degree view spread out over two stories, the behemoth vehicle boasts a height of 21.6 feet, a length of 46 feet, and a width of 20 feet, and it's fully drivable. Dubbed the Hummer H1X3, the incredible monster truck was commissioned by a rich man, also known as the Rainbow Sheik, a billionaire member of the Emirati royal family and the equivalent of the mayor of Abu Dhabi. Built in the frame of the U.S. Army steel hauled amphibious cargo vehicle, it runs with four diesel engines, one for each wheel, and it's three times bigger than a normal Hummer H1 by scale and 27 times by volume. The gargantuan interior is spread over two floors, both of which are still being worked on, but they're slated to contain a bedroom, kitchen, and bathroom. This is where the largest collection, a Guinness World Record, of 4x4 vehicles resides at 718 models. Members of the public were left picking up their jaws from the floor when the C3 was driven on public roads. A small army of workers helped guide and maneuver the giant contraption on its journey. <laughs> Rooster Pedicure A woman living in Shanghai, China turned her pet rooster into an internet sensation after giving it some fancy nails. She decided her beloved pet's nails needed a different makeover, so she took it to a nail salon. However, the staff here refused to do nails for fear that it would affect the image of the salon with other customers, so she went online to buy tools and develop it for pets. It took over an hour to decorate, but the results didn't look too bad. According to the girl, because the chicken has been on her side during some tough years of her life, she wants to show her gratitude. The young young woman decorated the nails of her pet rooster with all kinds of enamel colors and even placed flowers and jacks on each of its claws. She spent more than an hour doing the rooster's pedicure, since several places where they perform these aesthetic procedures immediately rejected her. Some people just don't get it. After photos and videos of the luxurious nails were posted on social media, a heated debate about the health of the chicken ensued. Some people even posted that it was abusive, but the owner had to step forward to assure everyone that the toenails did not affect the health of the chicken. <laughs> Soviet Bloody Candy As a child growing up in the Soviet Union, many folks recall their parents would often come back from the pharmacy with a wholesome and healthy treat, a candy bar called Hemotogen, officially produced as an over-the-counter supplement to treat anemia, which affects nearly a quarter of all humans but is especially prevalent in young children. It was basically the Soviet equivalent of chewable vitamins, although its texture was more like a Tootsie Roll. Unlike modern American sweet supplement treats though, the hematogen that many Russians grew up eating wasn't made with vitamins and minerals isolated from natural products or produced synthetically in a lab. Its iron, which prevents anemia, came from black food albumin, a technical term 
for blood. Specifically, Soviet manufacturers produced hematogen bars such that each was at least 5% cow's blood. Hematogen wasn't a rare product or a brief experiment. By most accounts, it was a fixture in Soviet pharmacies for decades, right up until the collapse of the USSR and in Soviet childhoods. Even today, it's still widely available throughout the former Soviet Union, albeit not as ubiquitous as it was a few decades ago. In Soviet-era Russia, candy wasn't made for pleasure, it was a functional food. <laughs> <laughs> Nose only face mask. Trend spotting in South Korea has identified a new mask style, a cosk, which essentially institutionalizes the practice of using a mask to cover one's nose or mouth, but not both. They actually look like a little bra for your mid face, securely covering the nose, but conveniently leaving the wearer's mouth unencumbered and free to eat drink, whatever. With two pieces, one of which can be removed to leave the mouth uncovered, it's like a little striptease to tempt disease transmission. It's unclear why people imagine that covering only half of the same respiratory system is an effective way to protect against sickness, but the new approach seems to be popular. In fairness, wearing one is equally as ineffective as wearing a mask under the nose, but it does give folks a new option. <laughs> Ramen Soft Serve If adventurous food trends are your thing, then this is the meal for you. Spicy ramen with a whole soft serve ice cream cone dropped into the soup. There's even seaweed sprinkled on the soft serve. It also comes with a ramen, bean sprouts, the works. The Japanese restaurant claims it's not as strange as it sounds, describing the sweet and spicy miso ramen with ice cream as a pairing that goes well together. It adds that the spiciness of the ramen makes your stomach tense, but the soft ice cream has a gentle sweetness and you can enjoy a unique flavor harmony. We'll take their word for it, but the restaurant has been getting a lot of attention for its unique miso ramen dish with a soft serve cone melting in the center of the bowl. If you were to make a list of ingredients that you think best complement miso ramen, milk and chocolate soft serve probably wouldn't be at the top. Apparently, the creators went through many types of desserts and the soft serve was just unexpectedly compatible with the ramen dish. Although it doesn't sound like the kind of food we'd mix together, the restaurant claims you'd be surprised how well they go together. Hmm. Hoss the Hairball This colossal hairball named Hoss was created by Steve Warden, a hairstylist in the United States. Hoss weighs a hefty 225.13 pounds and holds the record for the largest ball of human hair, the equivalent to 300 cans of soup or 15 bowling balls. The hairstylist, who owns and operates a salon in Cambridge, Ohio, was inspired by his son to create Hoss and he got to work and transform part of his salon into a hairball studio. After collecting the hair for a while, it was finally time for the stylist to mold it. After a visit to the hardware store and trying several different types of glue, and he literally just put gloves on, grabbed a bunch of the hair and kind of formed it into a ball, Hoss continued to grow. But little did the stylist know, Hoss's journey was only just beginning. Ripley's Believe It or Not decided to put Hoss on display at their stand at Orlando Comic Con and encouraged attendees to add their own hair to the humongous ball. So Hoss continued to tour around, gathering more contributions to its ever-expanding circumference along the way. It soon attracted the attention of Guinness World Records, who believed that it could break the long-standing record for the largest ball of human hair. The rest is hairball history. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Centuripe. An ancient Italian village has been photographed from above. Its shape bears an uncanny resemblance to a person. Centuripe, a small town on the island of Sicily, was photographed from the air by a drone, revealing its five-pointed shape. Multiple images were stitched together by the photographer to reveal the full shape of the town, which has an uncanny resemblance to a person with arms outstretched. The aerial pictures reveal four longer stretches of buildings jetting off in different directions, like limbs, and a shorter fifth stretch that makes up the head. Centuripe is a small Sicilian hamlet of 5,000 inhabitants in the province of Enna. Observing an image taken from above, it's impossible not to notice a similarity with the shape of a person lying on the back, arms and legs open. Because of its small size, it could be said it's a village on a human scale, but perceptions are always very subjective. In fact, there are those who associate the image to the shape of a starfish. But either way, in technical jargon, this kind of urban plan is called poliobate, which means that from the center of the town, various branches extend in several directions, five in this case. Today, not only the village, but the whole surrounding area is a tourist destination. <laughs> purple Sky We've heard of purple rain, but purple sky? A Swedish town was seriously concerned when the sky kept turning a bright color at night. The sky around their homes turned a bizarre shade of purple. 
The unusual purple haze is most often seen when low-lying thick clouds are hanging in the sky. But it's not the end of days, as many residents thought. It's all for the health and well-being of tomatoes. Some kinds of plants can survive with little or no light, but the tomato plant is not one of them. Whether natural or artificial, light is something tomato plants need in abundance. The purple hue has been caused by a new energy-efficient lighting system installed at one of Sweden's largest tomato farms. Although tomato plants require light in general, like many other kinds of plants, they especially make use of light in the blue and red slices of the spectrum. Blue and red make purple. The tomato farm operators have started using a new energy-saving LED light system which glows this vibrant purple. But operators began turning the lights off between the hours of 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. to keep residents from being alarmed. The glow falling on the plants is said to be good for them and is supposed to extend the growing season. Tomatoes powered by purple. <laughs> Stretchy paper. When you first look at these intricate works of art, they look like they might be made of stone or wood. Some of his sculptures look so real, you may even be tempted to bite into a slice of cake or a burger or drink out of a can of pop that the artist has created. But in reality, Felix Semper's sculptures are made from stacks of paper glued together and meticulously sculpted and painted to look like the real deal. It was an accidental snow sculpture that provoked his interest in the art form. That was the beginning of my self-discovery to find myself in art, he says. He began experimenting with paper sculptures as he felt he was going to pursue a successful career in sculpture and he had to be totally different from everything out there. Explaining how he typically creates his stretchable art sculptures, a huge hit on social media, Mr. Simper says he begins by gluing sheets of paper together. A larger bust can take up to 7,000 sheets of paper. Using sandpaper, he then carefully carves the paper block into the desired shape. The process finally ends with him painting painstakingly painting the paper sculpture with incredible attention to detail. He's enjoying the attention that his work has been receiving on social media. I live to create, he exclaims, and it shows. <laughs> Elevators of death. If you're traveling through some of the more historical office and government buildings in Europe, you might come across a dangerous looking elevator that doesn't have a door, nor does it stop at each floor as it passes by. A paternoster, or paternoster lift, is a passenger elevator which consists of a chain of open compartments, each usually designed by two people, that move slowly in a loop up and down inside a building without stopping. Passengers can step on or off at any floor they like. It certainly looks dangerous. In any event, when one imagines the kind of carnage that might befall a stray limb should it get caught between the lift and the floor, but most paternosters are equipped with security features that should prevent that from happening. The individual parts of the elevator give way should anything become trapped in them and immediately stop the lift from continuing its journey. The construction of new paternosters were stopped in the mid-1970s out of concern for safety, but public sentiment has kept many of the remaining examples open. They were popular throughout the first half of the 20th century because they could carry more passengers than ordinary elevators. They're relatively slow, typically traveling at about one foot per second to facilitate getting on and off. See? The more you know, right? Just think about the person you were before you saw these amazing videos. We've all grown together, so like and subscribe and be the first to check out more great content. <laughs>